Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I'm Subhu. I'm working as the Director of Technology Solutions uh, at Halto. And um, I'm working from Halifax in Canada. So it's in the East Coast, like it's uh, it's just a little above Boston and US. And um, I've uh, delivered about like 20 end-to-end -end applications uh, in Sitecore. And I've also worked with uh, Sitefinity CMS in the past. And uh, I've found, um, like I've, I've worked on like Azure, AWS, and like a few different things. Like if you have any questions around uh, uh, Azure or performance or DevOps, like feel free to reach out to me over Slack or uh, or LinkedIn. And uh, I'm a psycho technology MVP as well. And um, uh, today, before uh, getting into this uh, introduction of this uh, specific tool, I would like to like uh, give a background of like uh, what we are doing here, like why this tool uh, is important. And uh, we can then like move on to the introduction. So, so we do have like content migration in every project that we do, like uh, be it an upgrade project or implementation or anything. Content migration is an uh, integral part of any project. Uh, so, what we do is like if it's a Sitecore upgrade project, like we have like a, a we are well equipped with like a lot of different tools like Sitecore PowerShell extensions, uh, uh, Razel, and a few few other tools are out there like Sidekick and all like uh, which works really well. Uh, but if we work on like any implementation project, if we are migrating to Sitecore or if we are uh, switching from one framework to another, and uh, that's a hot topic now, like because like a lot of clients are like looking to move to composable DXP, like uh, to a headless solution. And uh, uh, if we are like working on these type of solutions, uh, our content migration is a little bit hard. Like we need to work on a technology specific connector, like if it's from uh, a different tool like WordPress or uh, Contentful or something, like if we want to like migrate to Sitecore, uh, then we need to like build a technology specific connector for that. Uh, and if it's a new framework, then we would uh, work on like uh, some scripting and few things like it requires the development and testing effort to make sure like everything is uh, uh, set up right or migrated right. Um, and uh, in uh, on the other side, like if you try to do the manual migration, then it's a little bit hard. Like we cannot uh, complete manual migration. Like, like if there is a, a ton of content available on the site and uh, occasionally we'll end up with some firewall related challenges because uh, uh, when we configure these type of tools, like uh, we would uh, we would need to like go through the firewall. Like there would be uh, some kind of firewall be, um, uh, sitting in front of the uh, uh, backend that we have. Like it could be like a Windows application firewall or the or the web application firewall, and we need to like go through these challenges and uh, the productivity efficiency and like traceability. If there is any error, then we need to like work on like uh, error handling. Like when we, whenever we build a connector, like there are a lot of different things like which we need to like factor in like. Uh, error handling, logging, a lot of best practices. And uh, and also like with manual migration, accuracy is definitely a challenge. Uh, so in order to fix all of these challenges, uh, uh, this tool, Web Harvester for Sitecore, will help you to migrate from any website, like be it the Sitecore website or a non-Sitecore website, like you can migrate uh, uh, the content from any website into Sitecore uh, using this Chrome extension, which is uh, available in the uh, market right now. Uh, so this is approved uh, and published by uh, uh, Google, and uh, I, th I think it was published about like uh, three, four months back. Uh, but this is my first presentation on this. Um, and here, uh, th this is a screenshot of uh, how this uh, Web Harvester uh, tool will look like. Uh, this will introduce the Dev Tools uh, uh, panel in your uh, Chrome, and uh, from there, like you could actually like select the content and then uh, uh, select the uh, item, field, templates, and then like you can migrate that uh, into the site core. Uh, I'll move on to this extension fee uh, features and then I'll open up for some questions. Uh, so this introduces uh, a DevTools panel as I uh, told you uh, earlier. And uh, with this DevTools panel, like we'll be able to like retrieve uh, the URLs like which we want to like migrate. Like uh, uh, so uh, like we, if we want to migrate a single URL, we can do. And if we want to migrate uh, multiple URLs at once, then we can actually fetch the URLs uh, from the sitemap uh, using the rejects pattern. And uh, for instance, if a site has like a number of blocks, then uh, uh, we could uh, we could just say example.com slash blocks slash star and uh, uh, we'll be able to like migrate um, all the blocks at once uh, because all of these blocks will follow the same template and uh, uh, and we'll be able to like do this at one go. And uh, we'll be able to like select the site core item, sub item, location, like we can do like multiple mapping. But when we work with the headless architectures or uh, or even the SXA or ASP.NET Core or uh, JSS, like uh, we will create a page item. And uh, in order to like support personalization, like we'll have like uh, data sources as sub items. And uh, all of these can be done uh, in a single go. Uh, I'll show that to you in the demo the, that we have now. And um, 
and you will be able to like select the DOM uh, using XPath. Uh, XPath is a little bit powerful. Like you can actually select the uh, DOM elements, and also you can configure, you can replace uh, uh, if you want uh, to replace any of uh, these. And if you want to like pick a selected selected portion of the text, uh, like the first paragraph or the last paragraph, like you will be able to like do that with XPath. And we do have like replace options available as well. Uh, so when we work with like uh, field types like multi uh, multi list or drop multi list or the drop link, then we would uh, end up um, uh, changing them into the sidecore item IDs, right? Like when we look at the raw values, uh, then uh, we'll have the sidecore item IDs stored uh, for these fields, and uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, use replace options. So if there is something like uh, uh, like option one, option two, or option three, like you'll be able to like select the appropriate IDs as replace options uh, in this tool. Uh, so when it's getting imported into the Psycho template, you do not uh, worry about it. The Psycho will automatically handle that. And uh, this module also requires an SP module if you want to like migrate um, media items. Uh, this is primarily because um, we use item services. Uh, this Chrome extension uh, speaks to your Psycho instance through, uh, through the item services. And uh, uh, item services doesn't support in, uh, importing media item because it doesn't uh, support uh, importing the binary uh, things. And, and hence, uh, this SP module is required. Uh, with this SP module, and uh, if you enable this RESTful feature of this SP module, uh, then you'll be able to like import the media items easily. And, uh, and also, we have this modify and rerun option. Like You can now save the uh, uh, schema that you are selecting here, and then uh, you have the option to uh, uh, go back to the history and then uh, rerun it again. Uh, and uh, we do uh, do a lot of delta migration like uh, after the UAD, before the go live and the projects that we do. Uh, so in this case, like uh, this tool will be able to like uh, uh, update if an item is already existing. So it won't recreate an item if it's already existing. Uh, and it would just uh, uh, like overwrite on top of it. So if there are any content changes that's happening, then uh, you will just need to like go to the history, rerun the same thing like which you ran in the past, and it would just update everything like which was uh, uh, there previously. Uh, any questions so far? Um, just from me, so this is basically going to scrape the site or crawl the site, and uh, we're going to somehow configure uh, the data from the site to be exported into Sitecore, and that's the main part of it, right? The configuration. Part yeah. Of yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So it, it doesn't matter what the site is built on, as long as it's like yeah. some, some sort of consistency is there in the HTML. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So if uh, if the page templates are following the same pattern, then that's enough. Which, which uh, uh, like if we, if we take any blog or anything, like it usually follows the same pattern across the site. Yeah, most so CMS sites will have some sort of pattern anyhow. So that's cool. All right. Yeah. Nice. And uh, here are a couple of prerequisites. Like uh, we use item service uh, RESTful API, uh, so you will need to like configure uh, the services on policy or services locally on policy if you are uh, running it from the local. Um, and uh, once you enable this, uh, then uh, our extension will be able to like speak with uh, uh, the um, uh, speak with your site core. And uh, the second thing is about the Sitecore PowerShell extension. So this is specifically for the media import. So if you are planning to import the media items, uh, then you will need this. If not, uh, you will not need to like uh, install this uh, Sitecore PowerShell extensions. And uh, this module is the open source module, so it's available in GitHub. And uh, if you uh, if you would like, you can download uh, this uh, module and you can get this installed. Uh, this, so this is just a PowerShell module like which has uh, uh, a script like which would uh, uh, just get the URL of the image and it will download it and then it will upload it into the media library. And uh, you will need to uh, enable this RESTful V2 feature and uh, here is the link on how to do that. Like this is just a quick config change like uh, it will be disabled by default so you just need to like set it to true. Okay. And uh, another thing which I wanted to highlight is uh, uh, we are not uh, collecting any uh, information from this, like because this is just like handled by Google, and everything like you provide within this uh, module stays within your module. So, uh, so the privacy is good. Uh, you can also review the privacy policy here. It's in the GitHub. So, no information is collected. So, just only the number of uh, users is collected. Like uh, if you have installed it, then uh, the number would go from like 15 to 16, and then the country information is collected. Like if you are installing it from uh, India, then India would be. Uh, uh, listing on my analytics. Otherwise, like nothing else, like uh, no personal information, uh, no environment information, nothing is collected. And uh, another thing to note here is um, 
since the PowerShell works on uh, th this PowerShell RESTful V2 v feature requires your uh, uh, credentials. So you can either like uh, enable this for anonymous users. This RESTful V2 can be enabled for anonymous users or you can provide a an user and then uh, you can provide the user ID and password in the Chrome extension. So it's up to you. Uh, if it's a local instance, you can enable it for anonymous users. But if not, uh, uh, then you can do the uh, user ID and password. Uh, but uh, but it's not uh, collected anywhere other than your browser. Okay, so let's look at some demo. So uh, I've got this uh, Docker instance running now. Um, and uh, I hope you might be familiar that uh, Play Summit is the new sidecore uh, demo. Like, like Lighthouse was, uh, Lighthouse is still available, uh, and this is a composable demo from sidecore. Uh, I've used this uh, Play Summit, and I've also like edited a little bit on top of that uh, to make it uh, work and to make it easily understandable. Uh, so what I've done here is like I've created like two sites, um, and uh, for this demo, I'm considering that uh, I'm considering the second option, like which I mentioned uh, in my problem statement, which is uh, migrating from a traditional architecture like uh, MVC or even SXA into the headless architecture. So this is the scenario that I'm considering now. But uh, but uh, you will see that like it works for like uh, any website, like irrespective of the technology. Uh, so here you see uh, we have this traditional uh, website, uh, which has a home node and data node, and uh, it has like few sessions. Uh, uh, sessions and the, these are the sessions like which we'll be migrating from this old uh, uh, framework into the new framework. So I've called this as composable. And uh, under the sessions, like uh, we we have only the page components, uh, which is an empty folder right now. So we'll be migrating into this uh, sessions. And I've created like a few templates. Uh, if you can uh, see here, under this composable, I have this uh, session, session info and synopsis. Like these two are data templates and this is the page template. Uh, so I'm planning to like migrate uh, based on this template into this Sitecore instance under uh, these sessions. And um, uh, this is the demo site I've got. And uh, you will need to go to this uh, web harvester for Sitecore. You will need to search uh, from the Google uh, web store and uh, you will need to like, click on add to Chrome. And uh, once this is added, so I'll uh, go to inspect element and you'll see this dev panels here. Uh, I'll just refresh this page because what happens is uh, uh, since we need to like select these DOMs, uh, uh, there will be a, a tiny script like which will uh, which will be added onto this page, which will allow you to like, uh, uh, which will just add some colors like when we hover on uh, certain elements, like you'll see this uh, during the demo. So that's why I'm just refreshing the page. So after I install the Insta extension, so now uh, I'm trying to like uh, fetch the URLs from sitemap. Uh, so this is the sitemap that I've got. Uh, and I'm just, uh, so this will auto populate uh, based on the uh, URL that you are having. If I want, like I can change uh, uh, this rejects based on uh, my need. And also if the sitemap URL is different, uh, you will need to change that. So when I click on fetch URLs, there are 25 URLs uh, uh, which are following this, uh, which, are, which are under the sessions in the sitemap. And you can see that uh, it's getting added here. And uh, I'm planning to migrate to the same instance. So I'm just copying this and pasting it here. So if it's uh, if you're already logged into this instance, then uh, you will see a tick mark here. If not, you will see a red button like which says uh, authenticate to proceed. And you will need to authenticate uh, because this item services like it works based on the authentication. And uh, it it'll just open a new window in the same browser, and you will need to authenticate. That's it. Since I've already logged in here, it's not asking me for to authenticate now. And uh, uh, as we discussed, I'm planning to migrate this into this sessions. And uh, the template would be. Um, I'm planning to create it based on this sessions template. And uh, what it actually does is uh, when I select this template type, it would uh, populate the fields here. And uh, I'll select this. So this is the one which I was uh, referring to uh, earlier. So you will need to refresh the page after installing the extension so that uh, it will find uh, the exact thing. And uh, you will also see a little hover uh, 
uh, to understand like what the uh, text is being selected. And uh, I'm adding another mapping section here. So this dollar name uh, represents the name of this uh, page, which is this one. So if you want to like carry over the same thing, like you can just use dollar name. And if you want to change uh, any of these, like if there is any uh, spaces or anything, and if you want to like change that to hyphens, when migrating to Sitecore, then you can go to the settings and you can change it here. So this is a rejects pattern. So um, like if there is any space or if there is any percentage 20, it would change to hyphen. So that is what uh, I've configured here. So this works best for like most of the sites. So if you want, you can change it here. And, and another thing like, uh, so my admin uh, username is different here for this demo site. So I'm just changing it here, clicking on the save. So otherwise, uh, if you want to like change the language, uh, you can change it here. And uh, if the item already exists, you can uh, select if you, would, if you would like to skip or update item. So I'll just keep it as update item here. And um, under this, so now, um, so we are, we are going to like create a sub item. Uh, so this is the primary page item and under this uh, i'm going to create a page components uh, item so which is just an empty data folder and uh, i'm adding another mapping section to add the sub items so the first sub item will be uh, info for this case So I'm going to like select this location here. And the second field is the D. Uh, and this D uh, is, uh, uh, is a multi-list field here. It, it's a drop link field uh, in Sitecore here. You can see this is a drop link field. And uh, this is pointing to this uh, data source location. So as you know, the drop link field uh, will accept only IDs, the item IDs. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm going to like uh, add something like this. So if it has day one in this text, then it's going to like replace this with this ID. And uh, if it has day two, then it would replace with this ID. So uh, this also accepts rejects. So if you want to like uh, do rejects patterns, then you could do uh, here as well. And uh, the next thing is uh, this time and, uh, and the image. So since I'm importing this image, uh, I have to enable the RESTful v2, and I have to like specify the uh, uh, username and password there. So uh, one thing to note here is like when I add this image, um, so this uh, the image like what happens is like uh, in case of the uh, XPath, so this is the XPath like uh, which is uh, automatically populated, right? Like if you see here, um, so if I try to like search based on the XPath, like you will see that it is highlighting this. Uh, a tag itself, uh, but it doesn't have any inner text and it just has this SRC attribute like where it has the uh, uh, ID. So basically we need to like get the, uh, um, get the source attribute value. Uh, so what I need to do is here, I will need to like uh, add the uh, SRC attribute. So in order to make sure you are selecting the right one, like you will see an uh, orange bar here. So which will, uh, which will say you like you need to like select the appropriate attribute text and uh, and you can select it like this will just highlight only for the image and the link field types because in the link field as well like we would need to uh, select the uh, href attribute right like but uh, but for all other like single line single line text uh, rich text and drop link and all like you will be able to like select the uh, uh, text directly but only for the image and link field like you will see an orange icon like which will ask you to like select the attribute
in the uh, and uh, one another thing to notice like uh, you will also see a replace option added here automatically because the image field types uh, would require a different type of raw value right like it can't accept the uh, the url directly inside course so uh, you will see a different uh, uh, different uh, replace option automatically added here so so whatever it's uh, whatever url we have like it would just like upload and the uploaded media id like would get added here so this is done automatically, but I, I just wanted to highlight. And if you have any specific template, like you can just like click on it and uh, edit it if you want. And uh, I'm adding another mapping section. So I'm calling this as summary. So I'm copy. I'm planning to like use this description for that. So for this summary, I'm planning to copy this uh, description here. And uh, another thing which I forgot to do is uh, this media path. Uh, so we need to specify like which media path it has to import to, otherwise it would directly get added into the media library. So since we have images in this section uh, for this specific item, so I'm trying to like uh, select maybe this composable. And uh, make sure if I've selected everything fine. Yeah, uh, and uh, another thing which I wanted to highlight is like uh, there may be cases where uh, you need uh, a multi-list field, uh, so you will need to like select multiple items. Like uh, I didn't find that uh, here, but uh, but if you have such need, then you will be you you will need to like double click here on this icon, and then you will be able to like select multiple item multiple. Uh, locations so if it's a multi-list field and if you want to like select multiple values and uh, once selected you will need to like come back here and then click on this icon so what it does is like it will copy more than one x path like you will see that uh, it's separated by this uh, uh, this pipe symbol and uh, and when migrating into sidecore like it will have uh, a pipe break uh, so that it will get uh, it will be accepted by the multi-list field okay, so we don't need this here so i just close it and uh, I'll click on this import and uh, you will have an option to about if you have selected something wrong and uh, let me click on view log here uh, what it does is like we have found like 25 urls so all of these 25 urls will be imported first uh, by this extension and it would process all of them like based on these x path and uh, it will migrate them into site code one by one and um, uh, as you can see here, like uh, this will give you a clear log. Uh, if something has failed, it will indicate as well uh, for any reason. Like uh, uh, in certain pages, like we might not have the expert, so you will get uh, you will get a clear indication in this report. And uh, you can also navigate to like history tab and uh, just click on the view log and find out uh, what is missing uh, in the future as well. And uh, the this go item uh, will take you to the horizon if horizon is set up. And uh, if Horizon is not set up, then it will take you to the content editor. Uh, so now the import is completed. Let's go and validate. Yeah. So now uh, so we have uh, this template. Uh, so we, uh, we selected this uh, name and page title. And then uh, this page components doesn't have anything. And uh, here you can see the, the location, the time which we selected. And, uh, and one issue with the image, I'll, I'll come back to this image issue. And uh, the summary is also imported here now. Uh, let's go and check this. Uh, Uh, okay, so I think I need to change the setting. So, so what I did is like, uh, so before I started this demo, uh, I forgot to change this. Um, um, let me show you. So uh, yesterday night I got everything set up, and uh, today morning, like uh, so the uh, there was some Windows updated themes, so the Docker stopped working. So I started it just before the demo, and uh, and uh, I couldn't uh, complete this. So I think I forgot to like enable the RESTful V2 here. So yeah, so this is set to false. That's why the image is not copied. Uh, but if you have this as true, uh, then you would see the images getting imported here. And, uh, 
and you will also see the image reference here as well. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, if you select the multi list uh, like you had shown, so you have to set up the, um, the 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 reference or the legend in the same way that you showed for the drop link, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so that will be one on one. And uh, if we rerun mm -hmm. uh, this, you saw showed an option for rerunning the sync. Um, does yeah. that uh, create uh, versions in Sitecore or it just overwrites? Uh, it overrides now, uh, okay. but, but that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I'll probably add this as, as an improvement for this. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks and, thanks uh, for bringing that up. Yeah. Sure. Um, the, um, can you go back to the mapping, to that import section? Sure. So th these uh, mapping sections that you have, so we can do multiple templates uh, at a time. We can like set up multiple templates and run everything yeah. together, right? Like blogs and, yeah, and right. stuff like that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but one will... thing to note is yeah. uh, all of these should follow the same templates, so otherwise the expand will not work. Oh, okay. uh, so if we have like multiple, uh, uh, if we have content for multiple templates within the same page, uh, following the same expand, then it's fine. Uh, but if not, then uh, you might run into like little bit of challenges. Yeah, you you need to. Right, so if I have like a completely different view for news pages, so that I would ideally have to set it up separately. Is there a way yeah. of saving, saving this somehow? Yeah, you can uh, You can save this here ah, okay. uh, without importing. Okay. Yeah, huh? and also you can come back here and uh, read on it. Like you will see like huh. which all uh, uh, URLs are imported and the secondary walls. And when you click on modify and rerun, like everything would get populated here and you can also edit and rerun. Okay, and last one from me. Uh, so we in on the sidecore side of things, you're just uh, using the default item create, right? So if you have like things like buckets mm -hmm. and all set up, it's it's gonna uh, automatically fall in place, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, so if if it's configured, then it would automatically pick those ones up, uh -huh. uh, whichever is within the item services. And if not, like we can also like uh, we can also configure those folder structures here. Yeah, buckets, we would uh, ideally want it to but fall in place. Yeah, I, have a, uh -huh. I think so. I, I'm not sure how item services work with buckets. Uh, uh, I need to try that. Okay, uh, but yeah, but if yeah. item services auto, yeah, if item services handle that, then it, it would be it would be done. Yeah. Okay, because especially because we are targeting mm -hmm. things, repetitive uh, templates, right? So buckets yeah. might be a good idea and also uh, uh mm -hmm. you, you might have configured the uh, the bucket parts and stuff in the uh, in the bucket settings so you don't you wouldn't want to mm -hmm. do it here and you you might want it to respect that so uh, I really yeah, 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 yeah that's true place. i haven't checked with items yeah, yeah. either <laughs> yeah yeah sure yeah that's a good point as well uh, i'll make a note of uh, these two yeah the versions and then the the bucket i need to validate okay. uh, i'll do that yeah. yeah, and one good thing about the uh, Chrome extension is that like you will not need to like upgrade anything. Like uh, whenever there is a new version, it would automatically get uh, installed. So, you'll, uh, so I'll uh, I'll see like if there is any change. I think for version there needs to be some change. I'll make that change and push that. The buckets, I believe, it should be handled. Uh, but I'll validate and then uh, if there is anything, I'll uh, I'll change and I'll uh, uh, share it with Google for approval and it should be published in uh, two three days time. Um, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. I think we can go on. Sure. And uh, so before we move back to the slides, uh, I would like to show this. Uh, uh, so since this is an open source module, like I would like to show like how uh, uh, I've configured a few things here. So uh, when you go to this GitHub repository, like you will see that um, uh, there are four major sections here. So the first one is the content scripts. Uh, so this is the script which is responsible for um, for the hovering, like highlighting uh, the DOM elements on hover. And this would get injected into the uh, the web page. And uh, you will see like, uh, like only one uh, CSS and one JS here. And, um, and this will help to like uh, grab the selected elements uh, back to the uh, 
extension as an XPath, and then it would uh, take back into the site code. And the second section is the dev tools. Like uh, here is the this this has all the code needed for the dev tools for part to run. And uh, you'll see the the CSS, JS, and all the the images. Like we have few images uh, uh, there. And uh, and also like I followed uh, the clean code principles and also the modular architecture here. Um, so if that is uh, anything which you would like to like improve or if you, if you want to like contribute, uh, uh, then you can look at it here. And uh, I believe you'll be able to like easily understand and do that. Uh, if you have any feature and en uh, enhancement or if you have any bugs, like please uh, report it in the GitHub. And uh, if you would like to contribute, you can also contribute. Uh, this is an open source module. And um, and these are the views like uh, which we have seen there. And uh, if I close this dev tools, and this module uh, includes the PowerShell module uh, a script here. So you will see that. Um, so this is the PowerShell uh, script, like which uh, helps us to like import the media items. And then uh, the options, uh, options is the one like which you uh, can see from here. So when you go to the extensions, uh, here you see this uh, the prerequisites and what you need to do, right? So the so this is option. So this is very straightforward. So that's it. And uh, so I have shared the privacy policy in terms of conditions. So so you can uh, review that. And uh, this is the manifest JSON. Like we are using the uh, V3 version of the Chrome extension. So uh, Google upgraded from V2 to V3 recently. And uh, and the deadline to upgrade to V3 is uh, I think mid of this year. Uh, but we are good already. So we so this is already in V3. So we move back to the slides now. So, but sorry, one more thing. Um, in sure. the demo, so if we have uh, multiple languages, uh, as in, mm. uh, I, I saw that you showed we have the language option, yeah. which would ideally mention the target. But do you have to do this mapping mm. again? Because, uh, or just change the URL, mm. if, like edit the uh, source URL and. Yeah, just changing the URL should be fine. Like we just need to like uh, change into like uh, maybe French and then uh, yeah. The mapping should hold good if the same thing is followed anyway. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, once you import, like you will see another history entry. So so you can also like see the imported URLs and change. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And um, yeah, a few things uh, you should keep in mind. So this will just import it to the master database because uh, item services by default would not uh, allow like publishing, right? So so this won't publish it to the web database. So you need to like review and publish it by yourself. Uh, but there is another community module like available, uh, which is an add-on to the item services. Uh, but I just thought like uh, people would like to like test it and then publish it, right? So I, just, I didn't include that here. Uh, the next thing is, uh, so this actually imports all the URLs at once. Like, uh, so when I clicked on the import button, you saw that uh, after the import started, there was a wait time of like maybe, uh, I think uh, 10, 15 seconds, right? Because uh, the Chrome extension fetches all the URLs at once. So this is a limitation with the Chrome extension. Uh, so it would actually import everything at once and then it would uh, process uh, everything one by one. So uh, that's the thing. So, so here, uh, if you're planning to import more than 250 items at once, then you will see that uh, your browser is hanged for maybe a minute or something. So uh, you need to, so it, it's better to like uh, import 250 URLs at once uh, so that you will not see those uh, kind of uh, delays. Uh, but yeah, but it still works. Uh, even, even though it's hanged for a minute, like it will still continue to work. Uh, it's primarily because like it is importing everything. And uh, as we know, the browser is single threaded. So all the uh, JavaScript, HTML imports, everything is uh, done in a single threaded fashion. So that's why like uh, it's hanged. So you can't do anything else like when it's trying to like import. Uh, that's the reason you will see that uh, slowness. So, so I recommend uh, not going beyond 250 per import. Uh, so you can split that out. And then uh, if there are thousand URLs, then you can import it uh, like four times. And, was there uh, a yeah. Sorry, was there a way of yeah. splitting it out? If the, uh, I mean, I saw that the um, account got updated on yeah. had the option of paging that. Yeah, so we we just need to like uh, do oh, okay. a breakpoint no. or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm trying to like improve that a uh, uh, little bit. Uh, so I'll I'll try to like uh, split that automatically or or something. I'll try to do that. And uh, and the next thing is um, uh, around the non-process HTML uh, markup. So what happens is uh, 
So this uh, doesn't input uh, prepare the entire page, right? So there are two ways of doing this. Uh, so the one way is like I can crawl through the site uh, like based on all of these URLs. So then what you will see is like uh, this goes page by page and it would render all the page and it would extract all the data, but that would be expensive. Uh, instead, uh, I've gone with the approach of uh, importing all the URLs and then um, uh, extracting, extracting it from the HTML. So if that is any non-processed HTML, like for instance, if you're uh, doing a lazy loading, then you'll have a data SRC attribute, right? Uh, in the non-processed HTML, uh, then a JavaScript would change the data SRC to SRC. Uh, so if you have those non-processed uh, HTML kind of thing, then you need to like go with those uh, non-processed tags uh, like data SRC instead of SRC, because we are just imp importing the HTML and we're not importing any other JavaScript of the, the page. Um, so, so you will need to like uh, look at uh, those and then uh, uh, be careful about this import. Uh, any questions so far? No, oh, you can go on. Okay, sure. Um, otherwise, I am pretty much done. So here are the resources that we have got. So this is the uh, web store link. And uh, this is a blog like which uh, which covers everything which we discussed. So you need not remember like if you have any questions, you can go to this blog and uh, check it check this out. And uh, this is a demo link. Uh, and uh, and this is in GitHub. So entire code is uh, in GitHub. Like you can look at it. And if you have any issues, feel free to like create these issues. And uh, if you would like to contribute, you can also contribute as well. And uh, uh, like if there is any feature environment enhancement, please let me know. And uh, if you have uh, any feedback, like um, just feel free to like post it uh, uh, in the Google Web Store as well. Uh, so I got few positive feedbacks from the community, like uh, through LinkedIn. But uh, but yeah, if you can like post it through the uh, um, through the Chrome extensions, uh, then it would be really great. Like it would uh, help for the ICBO and uh, uh, it would help to reach uh, many people. Uh, that's it. So if you have any questions around this, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or Slack. I'll be online there. And uh, and also uh, you can reach out to me uh, uh, through these email links. And also I'm available at uh, LinkedIn and Twitter as well. Uh, please do reach out if you have any questions. That's it from my side. Um, sorry, just one last thing from me. The uh, mm. the fields that that you mentioned, right? The ones which are not on the uh, uh, on, not on load uh, the data SRC kind of stuff. So yeah. for those, you yeah. have to manually update the XPath. That's what you mentioned, right? Yeah, manually update the XPath. Like what uh, you can do is uh, this XPath is uh, uh, is very powerful. Uh, so what you can do is uh, uh, so this is an image, right? So so once this is selected, like you will have some kind of XPath and uh, you can just go in here and search it and then like figure out like what works best. And uh, uh, the other option is like you can also uh, do a dollar X and then if you can uh, do something like this, then it would also let you know. And uh, there are a few other options as well available. Like uh, uh, you can actually uh, learn more about XPath. Like I'm also like planning to uh, um, like add something to my GitHub repository, like with uh, the commonly required XPath kind of thing, uh, which works for the uh, uh, links and also the uh, images with lazy loading and all. So, so in case of uh, uh, the data SRC, like you will just need to like change it like this. So this is something like which is uh, which is not very easy, but uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to be like more flexible, so I just left it as it is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, another thing to highlight uh, here is the replace option. So if you have, um, uh, so this doesn't, uh, uh, you, need, you can use this for any other reason as well. So if you want to like change any content, like uh, uh, it might be day one in this uh, site, but if you want to like change it to like uh, maybe uh, something like a date, uh, date one or, or any, anything else or uh, here, uh, if you will see that uh, this is in uh, uh, maybe in uh, uh, the UTC time, and you would like to like change it to EST, then you can also change it uh, as part of this import. Uh, so uh, this will accept uh, rejects uh, for find and also rejects for replays as well. So this is more uh, powerful. Both with these uh, rejects and also the XPath uh, will be able to like achieve like whatever uh, we are looking for. Sure. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Yeah. 
anything else from me as well. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Going once, going twice. <laughs> yeah, I think we are good, uh, Subo. If anyone does have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Subo on all the different means that he's uh, mentioned out here. So he's uh, available to answer any questions you might have. So um, I think, yeah, uh, we're good for now. Thank you so much, Subo, for taking the session. Uh, it was very sure. helpful to go, go over this new tool. Uh, I hope that uh, people will find it useful and get back to you as well with feedback. Right? Sure, sounds good. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Thank Have you. a good weekend. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.